Hi, Mark here from the Tangibound Podcast Network and host of the flagship show, the Tangibound Podcast. Did you know that we over at Tangibound are always looking for amazing podcasts to promote? And did you also know that we are also proud nerds and geeks of everything from movies, music, gaming, TV shows, and comic books to wrestling, MMA, soccer, and football? Whatever you can nerd or geek out about, we've got it. And if you're interested, we can help you find it. And if you're a show looking for a place to call home, we've got you covered. Side effects may include upset stomach, dizziness, tumors, shakes, and in some rare cases, death from excessive laughter. Though to be fair, it's only sometimes. Other side effects may include diarrhea, gallstones, heart palpitations, and strong desire for cookies on the dark side. Talk to your doctor and visit TangiboundNetwork.com and see if Tangibound Network is right for you. therapist trained professionals of any kind so if you feel you do need help please reach out uh, and get the help you need we have a whole list of things on our files page over on facebook at facebook.com slash crazy life podcast and uh or just search on the internet for the suicide prevention hotline number or um go to nami.org or um, whatever resource you can find but just please reach out for help if you need it if you feel as though you're going to harm yourself or others definitely reach out and try not to be alone. Uh, also, if you uh, feel that way and you realize that you're writing a note or making plans of how you would do, uh, like harm yourself or others, definitely reach out. That's a huge red flag. And uh, lastly, please do not um, re- replace the idea of therapy with listening to this show. Again, if you need help, please reach out and uh, get the help that you need or contact us. We can try to help you find the help that you need. Welcome to the Crazy Life, everybody. My name's Jen, and I am your hostess for the moment. As long as my (laughs) brain sticks around. (laughs) Did you just, like, almost forget your own name? (laughs) It kind of sounded like that. Yeah. I almost did. Oh, okay. By moment episode, folks. Okay. (laughs) We'll have to restart this. No, we don't. Nah. Oh, no. Yes, this is podcast gold. Yeah, it is. Okay, we can restart, but I'm leaving this audio. Yeah, you can restart all you want, but we're just going to, you know, yep. like the prequel. So I just run with it. Yeah. There you go, folks. A little bit behind the curtain stuff. Right. There is a curtain, please. Yeah. What curtain? We've always been bare and naked for everyone to yeah. see. Yeah. I'm sorry. There is truth. That's there is a lot of truth to that. Wrong podcast, I know. <laughs> no, <sorry. laughs> I almost started podcasting in the nude. Uh, oh, wait. This is you don't Language. Yeah. Darn it. Yep. <clears throat> well, our new podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, if you haven't picked up, this is Crazy Life. I'm Jen. That's Hanno. That's Hi, Brian. Jen. Hi, Jen. <laughs> Hi, Jen. <laughs> And my alter ego is Ditz, so you had heard me mention that earlier. That's what that is. It was a battle between Ditz and Jen for for a name, <laughs> right? Yes. Like in that moment, they didn't know who was going to win, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jen went out. So, so who's going to start? Mm, let's see. Yeah, I want Hello. Her. Hello, how was your week? It was great. Yeah. I enjoyed listening to you guys because I listen, right? <laughs> Like a good host. Congratulations on your new car. Thank you. 
it's so you very got the, you got the same thing, just a different color. Pretty much the same thing I used to have. I used to have an orange one, and now we have a white one. Awesome. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Very happy. Very blessed. It's very cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Dad. Uh, let's see. A couple weeks gone by. Oh man! So last Sunday, right? It was last Sunday. They were. Yeah. So I left work and I was driving home and about halfway home. Well, I went to the gym first and then I I was going, wait, did I go to the gym? No, I didn't. I blew it off. And I'm, no, I went. Yeah. And I was driving home and I'm like literally falling asleep about halfway. Like I was fine. And then halfway I'm like falling asleep and I got home and I parked my butt on the couch and I never looked at my phone again until <laughs> it was like 10. <laughs> And then I see the messages, you know, from, from Brian saying, are you podcasting with us tonight? I'm like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause like it got to a point with us that we were just sitting here talking and then we're kind of like, okay, well, you know, we need to know what's going on. And I was like, well, I'll text him real quick. Cause you know, if you said yes or no, either way, we're, you know, whatever. But yeah. mm-hmm. I was like, well, he didn't respond. So, and we both <laughs> just figured you probably crashed on the couch. <laughs> And the worst part is, I mean, I'm on call on Sunday night. So I'm supposed to have the phone Whoops. on. You know? Well, it was on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was too funny. Yeah, that was great. Well, I was like, all right, missed that one. <laughs> so I assume you didn't get any work calls then. No, I didn't. So you lucked out there, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, and there's something I wanted to talk about too. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was I. I uh, uh, speaking of uh, disappointment, <laughs> self-loathing. Uh, so we, they uh, they announced who was going to be the new candidate for city council, mm-hmm. and uh, and it, it was uh, a guy that's uh, part of our uh, on the planning and zoning commission, and the guy's got a, a resume that reads like you know, hi. I'm super citizen. Oh. You should, you know, like it was like, wow, you know, and he's t- super qualified. But it was, uh, for me, it was interesting because when the, the, the kind of the paradox of what happened or the irony, I guess, would be that, that, that the mayor had asked me what it was about the town that I didn't like. And I'm like, well, I wouldn't have bought a house here if there was something I really didn't like about our town. Mm. You know, I, I really love where I live, you know, everything. Of course, there's always something you can, you know, improve on, but, mm-hmm. sure. uh, um, but overall, you know, I think this is the greatest place to live. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't call it home. And, uh, after I saw that and the replacement, the mayor gave the replacement on the planning and zoning commission to a lawyer that moved here six months ago. And I sat there and I went and, for, and the guy that's going to be on city council. So, um, Colleen, who left, was the first person under the age of 50 to be on our city council in who knows how long. Mm. Mm. It has been a group of of retirees for a long time or close to. Mm -hmm. But people definitely – it was everybody well over 50. And so the replacement is a guy. He's in his his early 60s. Again, like I said, extremely qualified. But – I was like, you know what, Mayor? Now you gave me something that to not like my, my, our town about. Minimum age to be on, on city council, baby boomer. Yeah. Professionals are are more important than citizens. I started looking at our planning and zoning commission. The only person that does not have a higher degree is the chair, and that's just because she has been involved with city politics for over 20 years. Mm. And most of our citizen committees – are all professionals. Hmm. My the 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 arbor committee, they're literally or the tree committee is arborists and landscapers. Same thing with the parks committee. Mm. It's mostly people that are in you know that are somehow involved in the in a field that relates. I mean even to, even I am to a degree being being a maintenance person, mm. but I don't have any sort of a you know I don't have a forestry degree or anything that specifically pertains to plants or trees or things like that. You know, mm-hmm. planning and zoning is mostly uh, architects, engineers, and lawyers now. And and I just sat there. I was like, that's not right. We should have just normal, everyday citizens 
on boards and we should have some young people. So I'm like, all right, if I do decide to run again, I now have something to run on. Yeah, you do. You're right. You know? Yeah, you could be the voice of the, yeah, the voice of the voiceless. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's like, no wonder our, our, so we have 8,000 people in this town, like 1,200 voted. Oh, wow. Like maybe 1,300. Maybe. Yeah. That's, that's sad in an area that's actually pretty active. You know, mm. politically, right? Um, so, yeah, and I just, I, it was, uh, it, you know, that's, it was, very, it was disappointing in, in the fact that I thought, I, you know, I, I had done a lot of work to run for an office, and I, I am actually more similar to Colleen, as we're roughly, we're around the same age, where you know, we just have a lot of similarities as to who we are as a person. And, and, and everyone said that this is, this makes complete sense for our mayor and what our mayor values. Mm. And same thing with his P and Z pick because the mayor's an attorney, you know, that's his profession. Yeah. And it was just, it was, I was like, okay, you know, and it, I had like a day of, of like just being a little bit bitter and then I'm like, <laughs> nah, okay, I'm good. You know, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, m- m- move on. But it is kind of, um, I was I was a little surprised because up till that point I was just you know everything's cool and then you know once the deci- once you know once everything's finalized okay now it's that period of like okay how do you want to take it <laughs> you know right yeah. yeah and and I was like all right I'm gonna be a little bitter about this and then you know we'll see where it goes and and you know do do I do I feel like I'm a little bit entitled was I a little bit in feeling entitled yes I was. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's the truth. It, yeah, I, I right. did feel a bit entitled because I put some work into, you know, running for a position that opened up. Yeah. You know, and, and but but again, I don't knock any of that. And it, uh, for me, is a, is a like same thing with uh, last night. I uh, Jen, I did before um, I joined uh, Brian, and we did Salty Language podcast. I was at my local uh recovery hall and i told my story to a group of people and i don't plan for it because what i've learned is if you try to plan something it never goes right so i just let it flow and sometimes it makes sense sometimes it doesn't and then i the the next day i'm always just in full of like doubt and shame and you know Mm -hmm. blah 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 and really for for nothing you know, it's just literally it's in my own head mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for something that I don't even practice. Right. You well, know, it's not and like it's interesting, too, because you know? you're doing it in a space that is supposed to be judgment free, essentially. You know, like you're not, you know, like that you all have. And I'm judging myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. No one yeah. else is. It's just you. No, you know? no one's no one's judging me. Everyone came up to me, gave me hugs, blah, 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 wonderful, this and that. And that, that that's why I think <clears throat> both of these things are fascinating to me because it's still it's it's always as as much as I feel good on a daily basis and I am happy ish and all those things that we work towards. Mm-hmm. You, you know, I am always a glass half full person. I always can be. And even though I can get on here and just go on about the complete, you know, you know, you guys talked about it last week, just the luxury problems. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're talking about freaking blinds, yes. you know, that these are these things that, that, yeah, but I can turn that off like a switch. It's like, okay, look at, look at what you have around you, you know, mm-hmm. like, oh, you're going to get fired up over this tiny thing. Mm-hmm. You know, like for the most part, I can do that, but there are still things in me that that I sit there and I go, is it worth it to do the work so that it I can I can turn that off also like a switch where dis- where I don't get disappointed, mm-hmm. where I don't feel even a little bit entitled, where mm-hmm. I don't uh, feel ashamed where I have no reason to be because I know I can get to that point. It's just a matter of do I want to work at it because it's a level of inner peace that takes another step of meditation and, you know, this and that, you know? Yeah. And, and I, and I, I go, okay, is it, you know, cause I feel pretty good with where I am in my, my recovery as far as, well, well, I like, I prefer like the well being. 
Yeah. You know, my well-being on a daily basis, I feel pretty good about. Mm -hmm. But when you see like there's places where you could be better. Yeah. You know, is, is it worth the effort? You know, because most things don't stick with me for too long. Right. I think tomorrow morning I'm going to wake up and not even think about yesterday. Right. And, you know, I think that's probably where you should really make sure you don't let that part of it out of sight if you're analyzing what to do about it. It'd be different if you hung on to it for a month, you know. Exactly. Then it's like, you know, I I still got some work to do because – but I don't know. I, I feel like that is normal. You know, like for a day or so, I can see, I know so many people that, like you said, they'll, they'll go give a speech or they'll talk at work in a meeting or interview, whatever, and they will kind of beat themselves up for like a day or two. And then I don't hear from uh, anything more about it. And it's like, I would be beating myself up until I heard, you know, whether I did or didn't get the job or whatever. And then if I didn't get it, you know, that would be the confirmation bias because I was looking for a reason yeah, to beat yeah. myself mm-hmm. up and now I have it, you know? So I, yeah. I think it's normal as long as it's not, <clears throat> uh, it's, you know, like in the grieving process, you know, whatever it takes, it takes, but at some point you do kind of, you know, that's, look at the situation and go, I need to get over this. I, I need to move, you know? So I, mm-hmm. yeah, I would think as long as you're not, you know, letting it eat you too much, I, I'd probably just stick with what you're doing, but yeah, it's just, it's, I think questioning one's, uh, progress in work and, you know, and I think this is something that we get to do every week. We check in with each other mm-hmm. and it becomes pretty obvious when one of us is, you know, something has ch- shifted or changed. Yeah. And so it's a great barometer of, you know, where, I mean, for me, it's a great problem where I'm at. You yeah. guys will call me on something in a heartbeat and I'm still being – I'm still paying attention to myself, which is also a good sign. Right. I'm not – to me, that means I'm not in complacency. Yeah, and the fact that you didn't – like that you noticed this like as a – however you want to look at it, an area for growth, you know, just noticing it, that that's a step the right way. You know, it's because you're you're seeing something that you're like, this is maybe not where I quite want it to be. But then, like you said, you, you know, look at it and go, it, you know, is it enough of a difference that it's really worth? Yeah, like, is it a problem? Like, that's yeah, really that's worth, it. Yeah. It's something that I would like to, to, I would like to not have it. I would like to be able to not have this happen in my life, but mm-hmm. it's not a problem. It's not going to affect my work tomorrow. It didn't affect my work today. Yeah. It's not going to affect my relationship in any way, shape, or form. Yet I'm sitting here and kind of going, well, why that would be kind of cool to get past that too. <laughs> you know, to be yeah. at a point where I can go into any situation, especially where, when it involves something that reflects me. Mm-hmm. And where to, to literally do what, you know, what they, to, what, they teach in Buddhism, which is, you know, that none of this is permanent. It's all, it's, you know, it's all temporary. It's, there's nothing worth hanging on to. There's nothing about self that is worth, you know, tying, tying to, to where it changes how you feel because of your perception of your own value. Mm-hmm. Right. Like these things like they're the, the idea that you could be divorced of that and and uh, go through any sort of situation in life and not take it personally. Like that's amazing to me. Yeah, I, I, I would love to I would love to have that. And and the only reason I bring up the fact that I, it'd be worth working towards is because if I look at the changes I've done in my life to where I'm at today, it's like if I was able to make that change. Well, I should be able to make this one also. Right. And it's kind of inspirational because mm-hmm. it's like I read this stuff. Like I read – I have lots of spiritual readings and and I get all these concepts. But to really look at them as something that I could, that I could grasp and achieve is something I never, ever considered before. Right. And, and I'm kind of thinking about it now. Mm-hmm. Like wouldn't it be awesome well, to never be disappointed again? For, you know, for an ego thing, yeah, yeah. or a self esteem thing, like like where that's no longer an issue, right? Because that's I crazy. I no I no longer have an over or under inflated sense of self, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm like 
that's a high bar, but it is. That seems like maybe something worth going for. I just read something a couple days ago about like with your um, self esteem and whatnot, and basically talking about how one of the things this person who wrote it said that really held them back uh, was they took too many things personally. And they said once they started letting a lot of that stuff not, you know, not not personalizing it. Like a criticism can be a yeah. criticism, but not a personalization, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, they said once they started doing that, she, you know, she was like, I've been so much, it's so much easier to deal with things. You know, she's like, I still yeah. care every bit as much as I used to. I just don't, you know, let it beat me up, you know. And and. Internalize it. Like I can yeah. do that at work now. If if I if I get uh, some sort of criticism or critique or something that that somebody would like to see me do differently, mm-hmm. I literally go, "Okay, no problem. Thanks for letting me know." Yeah. Because them having a conversation with me is not me getting fired, so I should be grateful. Right. And I can do that. I can do that easily. Right. You know, and mm-hmm. I'd love to do that in in other aspects of my life. So. Yeah, it's just it's to me there was the two things in the last couple of weeks that I that I went oh all right that's hmm. you know that's that 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 is a potential touchstone mm-hmm. you know that's pretty right awesome yeah just the, yeah. the even the thought to try for it that's really awesome yeah that's and and I figure that's that's uh, a you know th- again that's a positive that means I'm not, not in you know I'm not in complacency and I'm still looking for places where I can grow. Mm-hmm. And and improve, mm-hmm. yeah. and then uh, one other thing is, you know, we've talked a lot about on here. I've shared a lot about financials and my own, <clears throat> you know, getting sick, uh, tired of being sick and tired. And uh, uh, Sharon finally got to that point with her debt, and uh, for the last probably t- it's been this last week in particular, but for like two weeks, there was a lot of adulting. You know, mm-hmm. and sitting down and crunching numbers because it's something that her and I have never done as a couple. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's always been I've dealt with mine and I leave her, you know, her money's her money, my money's my money. That's how we've done it. But it was the first time to have a conversation about, okay, w- is this ours? And it's like, no, this is not ours. You know, this house is mine. Mm-hmm. And then the feelings that go along with that to be told that you don't have a part of this. Mm-hmm. You know, and and also like the car is mine. It, she, her credit wasn't good enough to get a good rate, so it's my name on it. She's second on it, but still, it, you know. Mm-hmm. And and then to to go, okay, well, wait a minute. It's also not your debt. It's like no, you don't own ha- no the you don't own the house, but you also don't are responsible for the mortgage. Mm-hmm. So there is a balance here, you know, but to finally have that conversation mm-hmm. uh, was good for both of us. And and one of the things was, is, and I, I don't know if I brought it up recently or a few weeks ago, but it was the, the part where I I'd brought up some things where I had paid for some stuff. And she had re- reacted where, I mean, you know, it feels like you're trying to make me feel bad. And I said, no, I'm not. I'm literally giving you a fact. Mm. I paid this. Yeah. It's, there's no judgment involved. If you feel a certain way about it, that's not on me. Mm-hmm. I'm literally telling you a fact. <laughs> right, and a, that that goes back to what I was me. just talking about, about the taking something personally is that, yeah. Yeah. And it's easy to do in that and kind I, of scenario. Said, yeah. Exactly, yeah. And so one of the things that, you know, I was involved with, with um, uh, basically uh, we have a 12-step program that deals with money. And I was involved with that, and I made a lot of improvements because of that. Mm-hmm. And Sharon's gone back to it, which is a really good sign. And she asked me, would you like to go? And I said, no, because my issue is actually you. <laughs> and I don't mean that mean. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right? But it's like it's like I can talk about money now and, and, and not have it be emotional or personal. Yeah. But, you know, she's not quite there yet. Mm-hmm. Well, within – and that, like I said, that happened a few weeks ago, and I was like – You know, and I just I just suggested I said it's just like when we do in any 12 step program, the fourth step is about looking at the things that you've done wrong and and looking at, you know, yourself and what your part is in your resentments and the things that bother you. And 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 it's a real self-seeking and it can be very, very emotional and depressing. 
But the idea is to look at it as just an inventory. Mm -hmm. We're just taking an inventory. Mm -hmm. You don't have to relive everything. Yeah. You know, it, it's hard to do, but that's the idea. And, and and I was trying to get to that same thing with the money. I said, you know, I've done this work so I can have this conversation with you. Yeah. You know, I hope that you can. And so with it, but by the next week we were having that conversation. Yeah. And it was so like, I'm just so grateful to have, that's my partner mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. that even though, even though it it can start difficult, it always goes to the right place. It, yeah. I never, uh, I never feel like this is not going to work. Yeah. I always have faith mm -hmm. because I've seen it happen so many times. And so in the end I was able to, you know, we looked at the, the ideas that everyone has to look at when you're in a lot of debt. It's like, you know, you have bankruptcy, you have various types of compromises and deals you can do, or you look at, you know, or you look at family or friends and stuff like that. And in this case it was like, all right, spouse, my credit now is at a place where I can literally take all of hers mm -hmm. and pay no interest. And she can, you know, and, and we can establish a debt repayment plan that's not going to hurt her credit. As a matter of fact, her credit score is about to go through the roof in the next two months. Yeah. <laughs> Mine isn't. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but I don't have anything I need. You know, I don't, I don't need, I'm not going to go buy a car anytime soon, you know, knock on wood, you know. Right. But mm -hmm. the whole idea being is that there's nothing I need to have great credit for right now. I'm not planning on buying another house. And, and this is our, our goal is, you know, with that conversation of like, well, what's mine? It's like, okay, well, why don't we start the path so you, so you can have something that's yours. You know, I did my work on mine, and I ended up buying this house, and I have a, a great deal of security before of it because of it, and it's offered me a lot of opportunities. Okay, let's work on the same thing for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's let's create a path, uh, a plan that in, you know, in eighteen months, your you know half your debt's going to be gone, and and you can then start looking at buying a you know a place for yourself as a rental income or something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah you know and and so we're, we can still we don't have to we don't have to do everything together to have the same sense of security as a couple right mm -hmm. you know and so it, it's been a, a it's challenge it's been challenging because you know i'm just i'm the one that's crunching the numbers and, you know, putting together the plans and, and trying to figure everything out. And, and you know, the, like there's there's been a couple of times where it's like I spent about an hour and a half or two hours doing it. And I'm like, at the, you know, at the end of the work day and I'm just like, I'm done. Mm. You know? right. <laughs> I'm going to bed now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm enough with the adulting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, especially like you said, you've done this for yourself already. So now you're doing, you know, it's like kind of like, uh, you know, like I already paid the fine, <laughs> you know, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, but I'm so happy to do it because mm -hmm. it really is about it's it's my opportunity to be of service to my wife mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and you know and and to have great you know friends to call you know I I called um, my good friend Brendan I called our you know our buddy Neil and you know I just said hey can you know can I can I throw some things at you and 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 to have these resources you know people that that help me go from you know get out of 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 the problem and get into the solutions. Mm -hmm. And it's like, wow, what a great place to be in life, you know, to, to where I can shift my thinking and get into a positive place, you know, and feel good about it. And yeah. our relationship as it, you know, even just in a couple of weeks, it's nobody wants money to be a burden mm -hmm. on our, on our, our self-worth and our personalities and stuff. Mm -hmm. But it, but it does. Yeah. Well, I, I told you, was it a couple of weeks ago? I don't remember if it was on the show or not, but I made a comment that, you know, my depression, like the quickest trigger for it has been money issues, you know, mm -hmm. for years and years now, no matter where I was, no matter how much I had, no matter what my, you know, debt ratio was, even when I had no debt, I still, if I didn't feel like I had enough money, it, it I took it personally, you know, it was a, I yeah. made it my self-worth, even though it shouldn't be. And, you know, and like I said, now it's, it, it's hard for me to fight that off still. That's something I'm still working on. <clears throat> uh, but you know, at some point, you know, I, I honestly, I think a lot of it at this point is I, I, I need to start making an income to put an end to that feeling, you know, to where I can be secure yeah. in what I'm making. Cause yeah. making zero, yeah. 
I'm not going to make peace with that. (laughs) You know, like that's not going to happen in my head. I know that. But, you know, like I said, even when I was making minimum wage and had no debt, I was always like looking like, can I find something that pays better? Can I, you know, and I didn't need Mm -hmm. to, you know, I had no debt. I lived at home. I absolutely had nothing. I absolutely had to have more money for, but in my head it was, you know, you got to make more, you know, that's how you're productive, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> Which yeah, we'll talk about in coming weeks. I actually have a whole like article about that. Nice. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and the, the, I can just tell that there's a level of anxiety that is, that has, is, is gone. Oh like, yeah. You know, yeah. That, that Sharon, I can tell she feels lighter. Mm-hmm. Oh, sure. Totally. Right, I'm sure. And I'm like, and I'm so happy that I get to be part of that. Yeah. You know, at first it's kind of like, who this is, you know, you know, but then it's like, no, this is worth it. This is, this is why we're together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just to help each other out and, and to help. And then the other part about it is, is, is one thing of, oh, and I, I really feel strongly about this. I want to help her achieve her goals. Mm-hmm. Yes. They don't, they don't have to be our goals. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They can be exclusively hers because she does actually want to do, um, she wants to go back to some, to school and, and not, not necessarily go to college, but get into some sort of vocational training for, uh, some things that she's interested in. Mm. And that's really difficult to do when you are doing nothing but interest payments on credit cards. Totally. Every month. Yeah, it is. So, Absolutely. so, you know, well, and the hard part is that having that, like, okay, you know, you're going to have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable for a while. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the thing is like, yeah. cause I'm, I'm, I'm still mine. September of 2019 is, is when I can finally knock the credit cards off. Right. So I just have to just until, you know, September of next year, you know, it's just, I just have to be okay with the fact that this, that that's how long it's going to take and to take a long view, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, and, 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 and just realize that you're just, you're just going to have to wait and, yeah. and whatever other things you want to do, you can have have to kind of put them off for a little while. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause the payoff is, the payoff is totally worth it. You know, it's not like, you know, you're just doing it for whatever, but it's like you said, it makes, and it makes sense too, because if you can do it with zero interest, you're actually making you know, progress on what you're doing. You know, when you're trying to pay whatever your interest, no matter what the interest is, it, you know, you're, you're slowly moving forward. You yeah, know? everything was twenty five percent. Oh man, yeah. See, that's where mine yeah. were. When, yeah, it's it, it takes forever. You can't get ahead. No, no. So yeah, that's that's like you said. It's awesome that you're in a place now where you can be of service to her and help her through the yeah. you know the same thing. You know. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And so. then, and then I get to talk about. I'm, I'm sure I brought it up last when we were talking about salty language, but it was just like the the, the all right, hand them over. <laughs> you know, that moment, it was like I had all the credit cards in my hands, and I'm like, I'm going through. Okay, all right, this one goes to the. You know, the, I was going through all the ones that were going to close. You know, the mm-hmm. ones that are just terrible. Where it's yeah. like, okay, that goes to the, the the cut. You know, you go to your your group and you have yourself a credit card cutting party. <laughs> this one, this one, this one, and this one. And you get this one. <laughs> and what are you going to do with those? Put them in my safe deposit box. <laughs> that's right. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's been my last couple of weeks uh, in a nutshell. So mm. how about you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll go next. Um, it's been it's been a good week. Um, it's been a good week. Uh, work slowing down, so I'm only doing about forty five hours a week. So, which is is good. It's a good happy space for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I started um, trying to focus on sleeping a little bit more um, to kind of help with that. I mean, anxiety's been out of a little bit out of control, but it's getting. I'm I'm adjusting. Kind of, uh, I'm using. I'm trying to find the best way to talk, oh, to word it. Um, <clears throat> I was given Prozac. I think I talked to you guys a little bit ago or a little while ago as a, an addition to my normal medicinal routine. Uh-huh. And um, I stopped taking it because it was zoning me out too much. Yes. And um, so I was thinking about it. I'm like, well, I'm getting a lot more anxiety, so I'll, 
give it a try again Mm -hmm. and see if that helps to mellow me out a little bit more, especially with the upcoming holidays. Mm -hmm. And so I took it last night and it's making me a bit of a ditz. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> as we saw at the beginning of the show <laughs> it's uh yeah it's kind of making me a bit of a ditz again so i'm like all right so this is why i didn't like taking that so i'm gonna yeah. take back off of that again all right hold on real quick before you go on because there's something you said something that i want to point out that i don't know if we've said yeah. enough on here which is especially like this time of year um uh, because a lot of people have issues with um seasonal depression and whatnot. Mm-hmm. If you feel like your medicine's not doing enough work, go back to your doctor and talk to them. You may just need a tweak through, you know, to your med- your routine to yes. like spring or summer or whatever. Um, I know of different people that have done that and it's made all the difference in the world for them. So I just wanted to make sure that's put out there for anybody. If, you know, if you're feeling that way, don't just go, oh, well, I have to deal with it. Go talk to your doctor because maybe, I mean, I'm not saying you won't have to deal with it, but maybe it is something that can be, you know, adjusted to where it's at least, you know, more tolerable. Exactly. Absolutely cannot agree with you more on that. You know, it's so important to have those ongoing conversations with your doctors. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we added this in since I was my request to have something else added and we, ta- you know, be backing off of it. It doesn't affect my normal routine. So that's why I felt comfortable being able to do so. But normally I would have that conversation with my doctor. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so, so, so what's your next course of action for dealing with the anxiety? Just going into this. So okay. My next, uh, I just didn't want to let you off the hook on it is all it was. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for holding my feet to it. I yeah. appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I mean, and, and, for the record, people may not re- like, I've known you so long that I know how your anxiety ramps up this time of year. Like, you're at a yes. much higher level because you're, you're hostess, you know, and yes. everything, you want everything right. So, I, like, that's why I'm a little more, like, ho- like you said, holding your feet to the fire on it. <clears throat> exactly. I think we're going on over 20 years. Oh yeah. Nice. Yeah. That we've been friends. Mm-hmm. So yeah, over 20 years. Well over. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 25, 26, something yeah, like that. About that. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> I know, right? Age. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yes. Um, so my next course of action is I'm doing lists. I started, I started doing some lists and I started, um, with my mantra which is, um, you know, a whenever I start overstressing or overanalyzing and getting cut in my head, caught in my head, I just tell myself over and over again, it's like, no, these are people who love you. These are people who are your family and that you choose to have in your life. They're non-judgmental and they won't care. They love you. They won't care. Mm-hmm. And that's, and I'm trying to make sure I keep applying that over and over again, whenever something I get really strikes me, you know, there's a, a controversy with potatoes going on that um, my brother-in-law is, I love him to death, but my brother-in-law is not the most responsible man I've ever met. And he is in charge of potatoes. Uh-huh. And whether he comes through with the mashed potatoes or not, <laughs> I, I have to let it go. Yep, yep. It's okay. If we have a meal without mashed potatoes, that's not okay. It's okay. That's not okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, yeah. So it was. It's <laughs> it's one of those things, you know. I thought about. I'm like, maybe I need to get back up mashed potatoes, and then have all this mashed potatoes in, the, in my freezer. But then, how am I going to cook it? Because I'm so I'm worrying about all of these alternative plans. And it's like, no, mm-hmm. no, you're not doing this. He is an adult. He has his responsibilities. Right. He's very well aware of his responsibilities. And if he I shows up with try. if he shows up with no mashed potatoes, people are going to give him grief about it. So, you know, but yeah, that's it for him to deal with. So <laughs> exactly, it's, and I can't take that. That's the other thing. Is like I can't take that on myself. Right. Is the, you know I mm-hmm. take on other people's emotions. You know their embarrassment, their frustrations, and stuff. Right. I, I can't do that. I'm not going to do that right 
Well, because like you said, he, he's an adult. If he says, I'm bringing this, th- you know, mm-hmm. most situations you go, okay, they're bringing that. And that's the end of it, you know? So you're well, right. He was kind of dictated. So whatever. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> that's what made me a little bit more nervous. But, uh. but, and I'm like, no, worst case scenario, I find a place that's open and I can go buy some if I need it. Mm-hmm. So I'm just, I'm not going to worry about it. And mashed potatoes, Gate is is going to be all <laughs> taken care of. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and it's just and it's stuff like that. And I I ended up going to a family gathering today for my cousin who has ALS. Um, it was a benefit fundraiser for her, and I saw a good portion of my family that I'm going to see on Thanksgiving, and they were so just happy to see me, happy to see you know me and my husband, um, just very loving and everything that they've always ever been to me. Mm. And it's like, why in the world would I possibly think they would be any different coming to my house? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Right. All of a sudden they're turning ratchet the judgment up. Yeah. (laughs) Exactly. Mm -hmm. These are some wonderful people that have always been super supportive and just lovely people. And why in the world would I ever think that they could possibly change that? Right. And not accept me and not just love me for who I am. Right. So. Yeah, because I doubt they're going to be, you know, making a bunch of snarky Yelp reviews, you know, on your house. <laughs> exactly. <so. laughs> that would be amazing, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Yelp reviews for your, thanks- your family Thanksgiving dinner. Sure. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's so that's been my, my week is, is just been kind of working with that and then this upcoming week finishing up the stuff around the house and working and then it looks like i'm possibly going to have six days off in a row wow nice. yes Jeez. because the of, of the way my uh, normal days off run into the vacation days so ah mm-hmm. nice. so that would be thursday through tuesday off and go back next wednesday so it'll be almost an entire week off. Nice. Yeah. So that'll be nice. Kind mm-hmm. of uh, a break, not have to worry about anything, not to have a high anxiety, just kind of decorate my house for Christmas and just do my own thing, which would be wonderful. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. So how about you, Brian? <clears throat> how are you? Um, I'm still struggling with, uh, um, you know, the my depression mm-hmm. being at a higher level, but I, I told Hannah last night when we were recording that what I'm trying to do is even if I'm in bed almost the whole day, I'm still trying to kind of force myself to do something productive, you know, afterward or whatever. Um, that way, and it's not that I feel like I'm lazy or wasting this or that. It's just a, this is how I'm fighting it, you know, because mm-hmm. if I don't hold myself to that, I'll just lay in bed the whole day, you know? So at some point I finally try to push myself out of bed and, and like, you know, like I said, do something, you know, like I told him I finished a, an audio book I've been listening to, you know, and on one hand I'm like, eh, cause it doesn't feel like an accomplishment the way reading a book does to me. Sure. But at the same time I took that step back and also was like in the last, what did I tell you? I know five years or whatever. I've read two books. Yeah. yeah you know, which is, just makes my own head hurt because of how many books I used to read a year. But this is still a completion. You know, this is still another book. I've put the information in my head, you know, Mm -hmm. so it's Mm. no matter how I look at it, there's, there's still an accomplishment here. And, and it, and it's funny because the first thing I thought of when I was looking at it that way, it was like classic me minimizing the victory, you know, (laughs) you know, Mm -hmm. and, and then, right. but, but seeing that and then going, no, I'm going to celebrate this, like talking about it on the two podcasts, that shows my growth because you mm-hmm. know me well enough to know, like I told Heno last night, how you were always great about like, no, no, don't, you know, don't skip over this. This is a good thing. You don't, you know, don't minimize this. Yeah. And I'm catching myself doing it now, which is what I want, you know? Is as we talked on here, you know, you celebrate little victories, big victories, whatever you have. And, uh, 
you know, so like I said, I, I looked at that as a big thing. I've got two more audiobooks that I'm gonna, uh, start here at some point. Um, but it's, it's just weird because it just feels like listening to podcasts to me. <laughs> it doesn't, other than, other than it was just one voice, you know, it reminds me yeah. of like the Dan Carlin ones where it's only his voice for like four hours. Um, except the book was 13. Um, you know, so that's made me feel a little better. And I've been getting stuff, you know, trying to sell stuff on eBay to finish off the money I'll need to file bankruptcy. So I can, you know, move forward with that and everything. Um, but I told Heno also that my, um, my, uh, fear of phone calls or my anxiety about phone calls is biting me in the butt again because I still haven't called attorneys about, <laughs> about mm, the pricing and you. different, I know, I know <laughs> that's, you know, that's the thing is it's difficult. Like I tried reaching out to one yeah. via email, but it didn't work out, you know? So, which is too bad. If you're listening and you run a business that has an email option, check the emails. There's a lot of people who have issues with phone calls that, you know, you might be missing client, you know, helping somebody or work. You know, you might just be missing money. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, so, right. mm -hmm. so yeah, that's, so I was look, you know, looking earlier and I kind of, um, I kind of have a, each week I try to basically do a kind of a to-do list for the week. And it's usually only like two or three things that are the bigger things. You know, like each day may have its own whatevers, but it's like by the end of the week, I want to have these things accomplished. You know, it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be Monday or what, even if I started on Saturday and, you know, at the last minute, if it's done by the week, I'll still feel accomplished a bit for the week. And that, that is obviously one of my, <clears throat> you know, one of my goals for this week because I need to do it. I need information from the lawyers before I can proceed anyway, because, you know. Like I said before, I've got some various questions and I want to, I got to find out what I've got to do and what info they need from me, blah, blah, you know. So, <clears throat> and the longer I put off the phone call, the longer the whole process gets put off, which does nothing True. but hurt my anxiety, you know, mm -hmm. because I won't feel um, free of that anxiety until that's over. You know, once that's mm -hmm. filed in the courts and things are, you know, you get that paper that says discharge, basically, you know, until I get that, I'm, I'm going to be really anxious about it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, it, it's doing myself a favor in the long run, kind of like Heno was talking about, like right now it's, it'll make me miserable because I hate being on the phone. <laughs> I hate mm -hmm. making calls and initiating those things. But I also know that in the long run, that's the only way that's going to get done. That's the only way mm -hmm. I can get that relief financially as well as the anxiety is is to, you know, push forward. Absolutely. So that's my goal for the week. And other than that, I haven't really done much. I've just – the weather's garbage, so I've been staying inside mm -hmm. almost all the time. And, <laughs> mm. you know, it's – Yeah. And I've been dealing with headaches again because of the weather changing. You know, we've been, I mean, it's been fairly consistent. At least there's that. My headaches have kind of calmed down lately, but you know, what is it? By Thanksgiving, we're supposed to start warming back up again. Yeah. A little bit. So I'll probably. Warming up. Mm -hmm. And the last thing is, <clears throat> and this is one of those things that I, I've fought forever and I will probably for a long time is for Thanksgiving right now, the list that I saw last night has 30 names on it for people that are going to be at my sister's house and it's going to be pretty full. And knowing that number in the space makes me mm -hmm. super anxious because I don't deal real well with crowds of that size, especially in smaller spaces, you know? So I'm, that is not helping my cause, <laughs> you know, That's a lot of people, right? Cause I mean, immediately when I saw that, I instantly started, like, I could feel the anxiety right then. And I was like, man, you know, cause I try really hard to go to these things. And I know my, 
my show up versus not show up record or percentage is not great, but, um, but I always try. And mm. I was like, Ooh, this is going to be a tough one. <laughs> Cause also with me not driving, if I get over there and it's too much for me, I don't have the out as yeah. much, right. you know? So that always makes me extra anxious too. Cause you know, that's part of the, the, what are, I forgot what we called them a, a couple months ago. We talked about that. Like the, the, what I see as a coping mechanism, but it's actually, um, kind of a hindrance to actually, you know, cause it, yeah. it allows you to avoid yeah. the, the anxiety instead of right. actually facing it. Yeah. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. I'll let you guys know next week. <laughs> <laughs> we look forward to it with bated breath. Yeah. <laughs> We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's see. Um, the article today, uh, do you have that one, don't you, Brian? Oh, we we're going with that one. <laughs> Unless you want to go with my anxiety one. That's the one I thought we were going with, so sorry. I don't know. No, that's okay. If that's you okay. have it there, let's just go with that because i got to find the other one. All right. I closed well, it. Well, folks, since we've been talking about anxiety, do do do. The article this week is 19 Truths People with Mental Illness Wish Others Understood on Thanksgiving. I thought this is kind of a, a, a fun, some of it's tongue-in-cheek, but it's very relevant to everything that we've been talking about up to this point. Um, the first one, and this is right up there for you, Brian, is the thought of being in a room full of people, even family members, is terrifying to me. Hmm, yes. It is. That's the um, thing. I know every one of those people, like there's, uh, well, there's a couple of people I don't know if I've met, but 99% of the people are going to be there. I know, I know, like you were saying, Jen, it's like, they're there, they're family, we get along, all that kind of stuff. There's no real conflict, but it's, it's just the number, you mm -hmm. know, that, it, that is daunting. Exactly. Now, the next one, which I, I didn't give my, thought to but it makes a ton of sense is with all the holidays but especially thanksgiving there's a tremendous focus on food which is hard for those struggling with and recovering from an eating disorder yeah, true enough mm -hmm. yeah right with this ad added addition the already food focused individual may feel overwhelmed break down and use unhealthy behaviors or even relapse hmm. yeah i can see that yeah well and especially because people get pressured into you know, like if, if you go to a Thanksgiving thing generally and you only put like a couple things on your plate, people give you grief about it, you know, like, oh, why are you eating like a bird? You know, they make these comments and stuff and don't realize that that could be, you know, like you said, that could be something that kind of throws somebody toward a place they don't want to be. Exactly. Also, also be mindful of people with diets. You know, if somebody in your family's got, a, is on a diet and, you know, don't, don't bust them up too bad on that it's like look they're they're trying to do something for them you know for their body or themselves you know mm -hmm. don't another great situation don't take it personally if they don't want to eat the the fatty high carb food you know like if they make yeah. different options you know don't don't beat them up for that <clears throat> mm -hmm. all right i'm done <laughs> <laughs> sometimes just being there for us or giving us a hug can help a lot. If we seem sad, don't ask what's wrong. Just ask if we need a hug. Hmm. It's nice. Yeah. Hugs are nice. Yeah. I would much rather have somebody ask me that than, you know, point mm -hmm. out that, you know. Are you all right? Yeah. Because mm. that gets old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it does. And it's, it's all well-meaning. You know, you know that their heart's in the right place. They're concerned, mm -hmm. but you know, I, that's why when I got married, when I was doing all the social different things that goes along with that, I made it clear to my support system that, you know, if, if I just step away for a minute or, you know, anything that's going on, I said, just don't worry about it. You, you know, I'm fine. I just need to do my thing. Mm hmm. You know, so everyone was on the same page ahead of time. So we didn't have, they didn't have to worry about me and I didn't have to worry about them worrying about me and all the other stuff. Right. 
It is amazing, isn't it? It, it like different things, how if somebody in your family goes outside because they're going to go have a cigarette, like nobody bats an eye at it. But if you right. just were going outside saying, Hey, I just need some space and to breathe for a minute, people are kind of, you know, it's not as normal, so they don't know how to handle it, I'm sure. But it's it's interesting how yeah. it's not seen as, oh, okay, you know, and just. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Let's see. Just understand and don't judge. That's always nice. Yeah. That's yeah. a good one. Nice and simple. Um. Even though we're absolutely thankful, we may not be able to show it. Our faces may show depression, grief, anger, or sadness, but our hearts are thankful. Mm-hmm. You know, that's something that I struggle with sometimes is, is the face matching the, um, matching the mood. Yeah. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So sometimes, sometimes it's difficult. I'll try, try to fix the face basically, but it ends up looking like I'm putting a mask on. But it's it, it's just it's difficult to get the face to match the mood sometimes for me. Mm-hmm. Well, or you know, like I mm. for years and years I did the opposite to where my face didn't match my mood because I knew if it did, I'd get a bunch of questions and all this other stuff. Mm. You know, I just wanted to, you know, like you said, there's just days where you're not like happy, but you're also mm-hmm. not miserable. You're just you're meh, you know, and, and you're just yeah. like, okay, whatever. And, you know, just that's okay. People need to accept that more. And please, please stop telling people to smile more. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is kind of, this one's interesting. It's kind of a mix of what we were just talking about, but a touch on the antisocial. Um, if I'm sitting alone, it isn't an invitation to join me. I've stepped away to reset my brain (laughs) (laughs) see for me if i were going to do something like that i would go outside or into the bathroom or something you know to to have that personal space essentially you know i wouldn't just sit in a corner in in the family gathering or something just you know like i said i do sit away from people but i sit i still sit with people you know i just don't sit generally in the highest congested area you know I try to find like that fringe and that's where I sit, you know? <clears throat> mm-hmm. Well, I like to be out of the way also, you know, it's like, I don't want to have to keep getting up so people can get around me, sure. and, you know? So it's more of that than it is anything. I just don't want to be, you know, bothered while I'm eating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then I'm all business. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Um, See, now this one I kind of have issues with. Mm-hmm. It says, don't feel bad if I don't call you or don't come to family gatherings. I really love you guys. But sometimes it's necessary for me to be alone. Mm-hmm. No problems with the with the second half of that. No problems. With not It's not necessary for me to be alone. Stop. First part of it I have an issue with. It's fine if you don't come, but at least call or let people know. You know, yeah, just... blowing people off is not a solid strategy. <laughs> exactly. And then hoping they understand. Here's the problem. The Life podcast. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, people. like text messaging makes this a, a lot better. Like before texts, yeah. this, I would strongly disagree with you because I'd be like, I hate making phone calls. I don't like disappointing people that combines both, you know? So that is a phone call I do not want to make. And, you know, and I know it may not be appropriate. It may not be the nicest thing. But at that point, it's not, it's not logical thinking that's keeping me from it. It's the distortion of it. Yeah. Um, but the other reason I hate making that kind of call or, or whatever is because with that, most of the time comes judgment. And it's either yeah. right there when you're talking to somebody or you find out about it later because somebody else will make a comment and, you know, oh, yeah, you weren't there like normal, you know, like, boom, like that kind of little jab at you. Yeah. So it 
that's why I said these things are tough, but I, overall, I agree. It's just, it's, you know, I, at least if I'm not going, I try to at least say, Hey, I'm not coming, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I also would understand if somebody didn't, unless they were supposed to bring the mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) Mm -hmm. I did because, um, I think, I don't know if I mentioned it on here or was off air when I talked to you guys, but, um, my, my aunt and uncle, um, respectfully declined coming to Thanksgiving Mm -hmm. because they had, you know, um, this big family event today we went to this week and, um, we started talking today and stuff and, you know, and they're just, you know, we're just talking and, and the subject came up and stuff. And I said, and that's perfectly fine. And I said, you know, and if day of something changes and you guys want to come, I said, you are more than welcome to come. Yeah. If, if you don't feel that you can, that's fine too. I said, you know, don't worry about it. It's no big deal. It just, I want to make sure that you guys know that you always have a place to come. Yeah. I said, make it a game day decision. You know, that's <laughs> yeah. fine with me. Right. I mean, call you up. Hey, I'm a healthy scratch. I'm like, okay, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Game day yeah. decisions happen all the time. No yeah. problems there. That's I, literally, that's, that's mine every time, you know. Is, yeah. is like, seriously, people don't realize how, like, the day of something like this, I spend the hours beforehand essentially in a tug of war match in my own head. You yeah. know? And it sucks. <laughs> you know? Because I know no matter what I do, it, it, like, I don't want to give into depression or anxiety, but if that's the stronger feeling, I also don't want to disappoint people by not showing up. You know? So mm-hmm. it's, 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 pretty much a lose lose even though you choose the one you think is better for you you still feel like you've lost yeah yeah uh number 11 being around groups of people is physically exhausting for me please don't press me to stay longer when i'm ready to go home Mm, yeah that's one that i that i really uh i I don't understand why anyone would do it to begin i mean i get it it's family they want everyone to stay but Mm -hmm. It's just kind of one of those things where, you know, not everybody's comfortable that, you know, it like just an hour can be enough. Yep. You know, it really my, can. My brother's that way. He's always the last one to show up for stuff so that he can park behind everybody. And he's he's last oh, in, first smart. out. And he's first been out. that way for years and years. And, and you know, people say stuff to him or whatever. But it's, he he's after he eats, he sticks around for a little bit, you know, has a little conversation and then yeah. he's gone. And that's, I think that's what that is with him. I've never really talked about it with him, but I think that's essentially what it is. I think he hits a point where he's like, okay, I've had enough, you know, and, yeah. and he leaves, you know. <clears throat> Number 12. And I liked this one because, um, this one refers to used to be in people's expectations. It's, uh, number 12. I can only take socializing for a little while before I need a break. I know I didn't used to be that way, but anxiety and depression have made my life more difficult. I promise I still love you as much as ever and generally am happy to see you. Mm-hmm. Cause it is tough, especially with family. They get stuck in their head in a, a specific time frame with you. Yeah. And that's who they expect you to be. And when you're no longer that person that they remember you to be, it can cause that disconnect, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, and plus they don't, they, they, they're able to look at the people there and go, there's no threat here, you know, Mm -hmm. and, and you, unfortunately, as a person with anxiety, you don't, you don't have that same Uh, option. So even though you know, and love everybody there, it's like I said earlier, it's like, it's not about who's there. It's the number. And if that number, like the 30 at my family thing, if I walked into a room with 30 strangers, my anxiety would be way higher. You know, the fact that it is family is the only reason that there's a chance I'll go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, and a lot of people don't understand that. If that was a room with 30 strangers, the odds of me going are real slim. I'd need at least mm-hmm. one other person I know in there. So, I, you know, that you can attach to basically, <laughs> you know. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> yeah, because that's one of those things where that just applies to so many different situations where, one person said, you know, feels like, hey, this is, you're amongst friends. This shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. But it is. That'd be great if it wasn't. Yeah. I know. Exactly. How 
awesome mm-hmm. for yeah, it's great that you can just snap your fingers and tell me it's not a problem, but it's a problem. Yeah. Regardless yeah. of whether yep. you know whether you agree with it or not, right. and that's that whole I think it's like if somebody expresses a feeling, and this was is what happened with with Sharon. We 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 went. We usually get to stay um, in the in in law unit below uh, my sister's house, and at that time, my parents didn't want us over at their house with the dogs. Hmm. Uh, but so that night, we were just gonna you know pull out an air mattress and sleep. But there were so many people there; it was gonna be all night. And Sharon was done. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's like, I'm done. I, I I just need to. I you know we've been driving all day and blah blah, blah and everything. And to me, there was just no question. Mm-hmm. It's like, can we just go get a hotel room? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Call one. Yep. I will tell my sister what's going on. She's not going to take it personally. Yeah. You know, and, and it's like, and it doesn't matter about like, it, there's no, there's no like, oh, well, you know, n- n- you know, oh, you can go into our room. No, that's not, that's yeah. not the point. Yep. Yeah. You know, oh, you can have our bedroom and we'll sleep on the floor. No, that's not, that's not the point. Right. And, and it, it was the best thing that, that I did was just to listen to her. Just, yeah. Just okay. You're done. We're going somewhere. You exactly. go ahead and make here's you know make yep. the phone call. <laughs> yep. Yeah, well, like exactly. when we were in Chicago, it was the same thing. I was surrounded by you, Tony, Jeannie, and T. You oh, know, yeah. all people that are great friends of mine. I know everybody there. You know, is supportive and loves me and all this stuff. But it wasn't yeah. the fact that you guys were there. It was everything else in that place. And I was like, I'm done. Yep. You know. <laughs> yep. yeah. And it was the same thing. My dad mm-hmm. used to do that with our family reunions and stuff, though, too. <clears throat> Whenever we would go to West Virginia, I've got a bunch of family there. There's always somewhere you can stay, you know, but my dad almost every time was like, nope, we're getting a room. And that way we could come and go as we please. Again, if we were just done with people, we, you know, we have a room we can go. There's an escape essentially, you know, so or in the event that somebody gets judgy because uh, that happened a few times, you know, that, OK, see ya, Why? And we're gone. You know, <laughs> you're not stuck in someone's house with a bad scenario or something. You're just like, nope, done. You know, mm-hmm. and I'm glad and I actually I feel more comfortable doing that even now. I would prefer to do that most of the time than stay in somebody's house, you know, because yeah. I feel yeah, like I'm disrupting their life. Privacy. Yeah. Like- Right, that too, and and also, you know, like I said, it's okay when I'm done. We can just be done, you know. We don't have right. to, yeah. whatever. <clears throat> uh, I lost my place. There we go. Mm. <laughs> um, if I if I say I don't feel well enough to attend, I'm not lying. You may assume <laughs> I'm referring to physical illness, but mental sick days are just as crucial for my health. Amen. Yep. Although I will say that there's also a good chance that the person's lying because that does come along with that kind of thing. You know, you make up because mm-hmm. if you just go, I don't want to come over, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. people's feelings get hurt. If you're like, you know, oh, I'm not feeling good. Most people be like, oh, that's too bad. I feel better. You know, so I've gotten to where that's no longer the case. Like, I don't do that anymore. If I don't feel like going, I just I, I'll tell you why. Like, it's generally because yeah. of anxiety or a migraine kind of a situation. And if it's one of those, I'm, you know, I'm not going to go to a big group of people thing if I'm fighting a migraine. I don't even want to deal with myself, you know? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> like, a light is too much for me, let alone 30 people, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but that is a good point, though, because um, that is where a lot of people get, you know, kind of uh, judged by by others. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, talking about, about it behind my back only makes it worse. If you want to help me change, talk about it with me. Oh, I can't. I can't shout this one from the rooftops loud enough. <laughs> I hate this so much. It's like, especially with me. We do a podcast where I talk about this every week. I talk about it on the other podcast too, but this one's dedicated to it. You know, to us mm-hmm. talking about these things. And, you know, it's like, so clearly I have no trouble just putting my business out there. <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. so why not come talk to me? <laughs> you know? I'm clearly not yeah. hiding how I'm feeling. You know? I did that well, for years. I'm done with it. <laughs> Number. 18 is the same. It's in the same boat. It's, I don't want to be treated any differently. And you do not need 
memorize some politically correct recipe for being around me. If mm. I need something, I will ask. So by golly, carry on. Be yourselves. Otherwise, it's just watching weird people walk on eggshells. I've never really That's noticed funny. this. Honestly, the only time in my life where I noticed it was when my my dad was dying. Because people yeah. who came over treated him differently. And he hated yeah. it so much. He hated it. You know, like yeah. he hated like my grandma would come over and just sit and stare at him, you know, and he's like, I feel like she's watching me die, like, w- you know, waiting for me mm-hmm. to die, basically. And Ugh. yeah, so like I there I really saw it. I don't I don't know that I've ever noticed that or had that feeling myself, though. So, you know, I haven't I've, I've just I've, I've felt very <clears throat> out of out of body a lot of times around in social situations, especially around family gatherings and stuff Mm -hmm. where I don't necessarily think that they're walking on eggshells per se Mm -hmm. is me perceiving they Mm -hmm. feel that I'm different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah, Mm -hmm. it's, it's that whole thing. And more than once have I, I just, I, best way to describe it is out of body. I just, I don't feel in my own skin. I don't feel comfortable in my own skin. Yeah. Like there's times I have like it trivia. Was it last week or whatever it was? Um, Jeannie asked me if I was okay. And I was just, I was in one of those situations where I, I essentially, the the best way I can put it is I felt like I was in a bar full of people and I was daydreaming. Like my yes. head, I, yeah. I wasn't really there kind of a thing. And, you know, so I told her that and she was like, you know, do you need to go? And I said, no, I'm good. I just, I'm just feeling weird, you know, goofy right now or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it was like, and that was it. She didn't treat me any differently. She did exactly what I needed, which was, anal- you know, make sure I'm okay. Once I did, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. yep, I'm okay. Cool. And I also knew at that point at any time, if I'm like, I need to go, you know, I, whether it was with her or, you know, whatever, it, it, you know, I'd be able to go. Um, but, yeah, but that's it. I don't, I guess I've just been really fortunate with, with that one that when I am around my family, they don't really treat me different aside from they make little snide comments about, you know, oh, you're actually here, here. you know, bullshit. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Um, it's all right. But that, you know, and same with my friends. I don't, I don't get that with them. So like I said, I guess I've just been really fortunate on that one. So, cause that must really suck also <laughs> feeling like everybody's yeah, right? looking at you and treating you differently, you know? Well, in this number 19, I'm kind of mixed on it. Um, uh, see what you guys think. Um, I wish people understood that I'm thankful for my mental illness because it has made me a better man than I once was and pushed me to love more and dream bigger than I ever did. Hmm. Hmm. I'm happy for him. <laughs> Cannot say that I am as thankful for my mental illness. Yeah, of all the things I'm thankful for, depression's never been on my gratitude list. <laughs> um, I will say I do understand kind of the second part of what he get, was getting at, though. I don't know if I had if I would have focused on some of the things I needed work on without mm-hmm. depression. But I also don't know that I would have had those things if I didn't have depression, like the rage issues I used to have, you know, and mm-hmm. I still do occasionally, but it's, it's way better than it used to be. I've, I've learned to let a lot of things go and, you mm-hmm. know, in the perfectionism I've tried working on and that, that clenching onto things. But again, if I didn't have a mental illness, I don't know if I would have had those things, <laughs> you know, you don't know. It's like a chicken right. or egg thing in on a lot of it. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know about that one. <laughs> <laughs> but if he's thankful for it, so like you I, said, more power to him. He's going with it though. Mm-hmm. So that was the last one on the list. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yes. And it was kind of neat because as, uh, uh, this was from the mighty mm-hmm. and there's people wrote in from different things. Yeah. That's one of the things I love about stuff on the mighty is it's written by people who mm. deal with this stuff, you know, yeah, or, that's great. you know, and or professionals, um, you know, like psychologists and psychiatrist types. Um, <clears throat> but in the comments, a lot of times people will add like useful comments in there. It's, you know, like, 
you know, they'll show like, oh, don't forget this or this, you know, and they'll just throw extra ones in there. And I, I've read Ugh. comments various times where I'm like, yeah, that's a good one. And I've even seen people edit the the post and put some of the suggestions in the post, mm. you know. So I, that's one of the reasons I love that site. <clears throat> yeah, actually, I was just looking at there's one right here that sometimes being around happy, joyful people when my depression is really bad makes me feel even worse because I want so much to share that emotion with those I love, but I don't have that ability. And I don't want to bring them down either by worrying, having them worry about me or trying to cheer me up. Yeah. Mine would have been more the, um, not so much that I was, I was feeling down, but where I just wasn't feeling, you know, Mm -hmm. because again, that's, that's worse. I, I would rather feel down than nothing because at least when I feel down, I'm feeling something. You know, right. Um, but when I'm around people, mm. when I am like that, like when I, I was really like, I, like it, it's not as prevalent now. It was, mo- I think a lot of it was, you know, medication I was on too, but I was just numb and people are all happy around mm. me. And I'm just like, I wish I could be that happy. I see people get excited about the, the tiniest things. And I'm like, I wish I could do that. Like, I can't, you know, <laughs> like it just isn't in me to, mm you know, to do that. And again, something I've worked on, I've gotten better about because of, you know, celebrate the little things as well. But for a long time, that, that was really tough, you know, being around people. Now the holidays and stuff wasn't as big of a deal, but you know, just honestly, just a day to day thing. There were so many times where that happened, where like I would literally look at other people and go, I wish I could have that. And it it isn't even like a grass is greener situation or something. It's like, I just wish I could add that to myself. You know, Mm -hmm. I don't wish I was them. I just wish I could have that also. (laughs) Mm -hmm. You know, absolutely. Yeah. Well, guys, I don't know. What do you think? We good? Pretty good. Yeah, I think so. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Oh, yeah. Right. Yep. Happy Thanksgiving. And if you want to continue the conversation with us, you know what, what to do. You can contact us at the crazy life podcast.weebly.com and the crazy life podcast at outlook.com. So that's our website and our email address. And you can reach me on Twitter at Jen's Crazy Life. That's Jen with a G or Dits with the Tits. Um, is my alternative account that I use. You can also, if you want to hear more from me, um, you can listen to my other podcast, Shake the Sheets. And shakethesheets.com is our website, and there's a link right there to listen um, right from the website if you'd like. Yeah. And Heno, how can they talk with you? You can find me on Twitter at Ida Heno. You can find me on Facebook, Heno Heiter, and all the other various uh, social medias mm. that are attached to Facebook. It's under my name, typically. Right. And you can hear Heno on the newest uh, episode of Salty Language. Uh, yes. Where him and I talk about a lot of stuff. Um, <clears throat> which, you know, Salty yeah. Language can be found at, you know, same place you found this show or at saltylanguage.com. What were you gonna say? And if enough of you, uh, enough of you go and and listen to Salty Language and the Crazy Life and give reviews mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. iTunes, then Brian's gonna release a special episode of Sultry Language. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But this is this is a listener thing. We need to know that you want this. <laughs> yeah. So give like us it. some reviews, mm-hmm. and you'll be rewarded. That would be amazing. Right. Uh, you can find the show, this show on Twitter also at the Crazy Life Pod where I post when new episodes go up. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Stunami. The other podcast I'm on, Salty Language, can be found at salty underscore language or at saltylanguage.com. Uh, you can find our Facebook group at facebook.com slash group slash crazy life podcast. Uh, what am I forgetting? Oh, we're part of the Tangent Bound Network, which can be found at tangentboundnetwork.com. So please go over there and check out some other shows. There's all sorts of shows on that network. So, you know, or if you're looking to start a podcast, Mark over there is a great uh, resource mm-hmm. to help uh, upstarts. Um, I think that's all the links. Um, <clears throat> so I guess at this point, you know, reach out to somebody, uh, you know, as usual. And 
you know, I talked about this on salty language a little bit last night too, is like, just, just be nice to people. Just try, you know, not just because, Oh, it's the holidays and that garbage, but just because it's just with something we should all be striving to do anyway, is just be kind, um, to yourself, to others, you know, but again, reach out to people, you know, still check in on them and make sure they're doing okay. Um, cause a lot of people do have a hard time dealing with, you know, holidays because, you know, like me, I, you know, after losing my dad, it's, it's a little, it's not as cheerful as it was before, you know, kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. So you never know what someone's dealing with here. And also if you feel as though you need help, please reach out to friends, family, doctor, um, you know, a, a crisis line, whatever you need to do, but, you know, try to, you know, talk to someone, you're not alone, people care, and, uh, you know, that helps out there if you really, if you just, you just gotta take that first step, which I know is the hardest part, (laughs) but there it is. You got this. You can take that step. We believe in you. We know you can. So go out there and, uh, spread a little bit of positivity and joy, whatever you can give. It'll be well-received. So have a great week, everybody. Gobble, gobble.